Uh, the song of a broken heart. There's a lot of passages in the, in the scriptures, particularly in the Psalms, where David and others pray, they sing, they pour out their heart to the Lord because their heart is broken. Today I feel like the Lord would have me speak to the subject of the broken heart and that God wants to heal every broken heart. Do you believe it? Say amen. Would you agree with me today, friends, that all around us people have broken hearts? Could be even here this morning, and it takes on many forms and many, many issues of life where our heart just feels like it's been torn in two. You know, Jesus came, church, to heal the brokenhearted. Not only did Jesus come to heal the brokenhearted, but he's called us to do the same. For instance, Elaine was sharing about this opportunity to give blankets to children whose hearts have been broken. You see, God has called the church to that very task, to look and to see the hearts of those who are hurting, those who are down, those who could use a love and a hug from someone, a card, a, a kind word. But I believe this morning that God wants to heal broken hearts, and even possibly right here this morning are those who may be listening online. So I've titled the message, The Healing of the Broken Heart. And the broken heart comes in many ways, as said before. I've chose two psalms. Psalm 34 and verse 17. Psalm 51 and verse 17. And in both these cases by David, he's dealing with a heart that is broken. But he's dealing with it from a couple different perspectives, from a couple different issues of his life. So we're going to talk about those this morning. I believe it's going to fall into every one of our lives today. So are you ready? Let's look at the scriptures together. Psalm 34 and verse 18. David says, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Now, our translation uses the word contrite. And then in Psalm 51 and verse 17, the sacrifices of God are what? A broken spirit. And a broken and contrite heart, O oh God, you will not despise. In other words, he will not put away. He will not disdain. He will not ignore. Aren't you thankful that he hears the cries of the brokenhearted? Father, thank you for what you're doing in the service this morning. Father, from the songs of worship and Lord, through everything else that has been testified to today, through Pastor George's testimony of his salvation in Jesus, Lord, to what you're doing in the lives of young people this week, Father, in rallies, Lord, what you want to do through the ministry of blankets to children. All of these things, Lord, have in common you, Lord Jesus. And that you are here and you are close to those who have hearts that are broken. I pray, Father, in these next few minutes that you'd speak to every one of our hearts. By your spirit, in your name we pray, amen. As said before, in today's world that we're living in, people are struggling with broken hearts. I remember my first relationship, and it was broken off. My heart was broken. I shed lots of tears. I thought she was the one, and she wasn't. God knew that through that season of a broken heart that God had someone else in mind for me, and her name is Julie. But I had to go through a season of a broken heart. But God already knew he had a plan. Aren't you thankful he has a plan? So it could be that. And all of us might, I shouldn't say all of us, but many of us here this morning could identify with maybe the broken heart of a loss of a job. Maybe it was an employment situation and now you no longer have it and your heart was broken. Maybe some can relate to that today. Maybe the loss of a, or maybe it was a missed job promotion that you had your heart all in your, you were set on it and you got the news that you didn't get the job promotion. Your heart was broken. Maybe it's the passing of a loved one. We've had several of our own church family this past year that have gone on to be with Jesus. And we've dealt with broken hearts, haven't we? The loss of a family member and a loved one. Who here hasn't experienced that? We all have, haven't we? Or an illness, an illness that drags on and drags on and all the things that come with an illness and our hearts are broken and sometimes we're like, Lord, I wish I could fix this, but I can't. Only you can. 
So we speak to, to the core of every one of our hearts. And it is true when it all comes down to coming to Christ as Lord and Savior, our hearts are broken because we realize our sin and that we're a man undone, a woman undone, and we need a Savior. Isn't that what Amazing Grace, the song is? Saved a wretch like me. So the writer of Amazing Grace had a broken heart. Understood that without Christ, I'm nothing. Church, the church itself is nothing without Christ. Do you know the, 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 that brokenness is, can be a good thing? Brokenness can be a good thing. Because the opposite of brokenness, I think in my mind a lot, is I've got pride and ego. And I need to come down a few steps. Right? Lord, help us to stay broken in that way. But what about the broken heart? What has Jesus come to do for those who are broken? Those who need to be mended, healed, set free? The very mission of Jesus, the very mission of Jesus can be found in Isaiah. Chapter 61 and verse 1. Jesus himself opened the Bible up, uh, the law up to Isaiah and read it in front of many that one day. And here's what it says. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to do what? Bind up the brokenhearted to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners. That was the very call of Jesus. We can learn from David as I have Psalm 34, Psalm 51. We can learn from David how he received help from the Word of God, from the presence of the Spirit of God in his life, because indeed he went through brokenness. Psalm 34, verse 18, when he writes those words, God is close to the brokenhearted. David has found himself on the run from King Saul. He's even found himself in the camp of the enemy with Abimelech, and he's, being, he's, he's acting crazy in fear of his own life, and he's, he's kind of doing a little charade. He's acting crazy, and he finds himself then running from the enemy's camp, and he's feeling all alone. Have you all felt alone at times? And he's like, Lord, have you left me? Have you forsaken me? Lord, do you even care about me? This is where David finds himself. You read the whole entirety of Psalm 34. It's a song or a psalm, if you will, of a broken heart. But you can receive encouragement as you read the rest of his words to us. Then there's Psalm 51. David has a broken heart here, but for a different reason. You know, David was idle. We talked a little bit about that last week. He found himself on the rooftop. He, could have, he should have been out doing the job and the works of the king, but he's being idle, idle in the evening, and he sees Bathsheba down there bathing. You know the rest of the story. He takes her. He commits adultery with her. He then has to cover it up, figures out a way to get her husband, out Uriah, out to the front lines of the, the fighting, and he's killed in battle. He's kind of figuring it all out because, you know, one sin leads to another, leads to another. Come on. You take one step into sin, the next thing you know, you're going to take another step because you're trying to cover your tracks. It's how it works, folks. It's, that's how it works. And so he finds himself, and Nathan confronts him, you sure your sin will find you out? Nathan confronts him, and he, had, he was going to have a child by Bathsheba, and the child dies. And he wept, and he sought God for the life of that child, but God did not allow that to happen, and he lost that baby. His heart is broken. He writes Psalm 51. And he says these words again, the sacrifices of God are a broken heart, a broken and contrite heart. Oh God, you will not despise. He calls out to God for help. He's a man undone. He's beside himself. God, I need you. Save me. We sung that song, Mighty to Save. You know, Pastor George said that's one of your favorites. You know what I think one of the favorites of King David would be? 
mighty to save. I believe it. Because that's what God did. God forgave David. I was going to say Dave. God, <laughs> that's me. God, God he forgave me too, my friend. Yes, God forgave him. Listen, God can forgive you. It doesn't matter how deep you've gone. It doesn't matter how, how, how destitute you've become and how wretched you feel like you are. Like Pastor George was saying, man, I walked into church, I was a mess. It doesn't matter. God saves to the othermost. Listen, I want to share with you some ways and experiences that we can experience the healing of a broken heart. And not only for you personally, but what we can share with others. How many know you got a message to share that God can heal broken hearts? Here's the first one. Pour your heart out to God. It seems so simple, but at times we are not always doing that. We hold it in. You ever been, had your heart broken about something and you just kind of hold it in? This kind of, sometimes that's a natural way of dealing with it, but I, I, I got to take you first on, on the two realms of David in his Psalm 34 and 51. Let me just address the Psalm 51 experience. He's got sin and failures. Sin and failures that resulted in his heart being broken. And yes, can I tell you something? The Holy Spirit worked in the Old Testament as well as the New Testament. It, before the cross and after the cross. And he was overwhelmed by the Spirit of God speaking into his life. Conviction. Have you ever felt conviction before? Sure you have. What do you do with conviction? Conviction. David, you know, have you ever struggled with the fact where it says David was a man after God's own heart? And yet, look what he's done. I mean, this wasn't the end of some of his failures. He had some further ones you read on the rest of his life. He had some others. But here's the thing. You and I need to be like David, be quick to come to God and say, God, forgive me. God, I've sinned. You know what David said in Psalm 51? He said, against you and you only have I sinned. There was a sensitivity in his heart that what he had done and what, how he had been was a sin against Almighty God. The same God who was with him as a young boy when he took the five stones, he took the sling, and he ran out to the giant on behalf of the Lord and the Lord's army. And here he is realizing what he'd done. Confess, repent. Feeling guilt, yes, the guilt of, of his own self-guilt and of the enemy. I mean, no, the devil likes to throw guilt at people. You know, God's not the author of guilt and shame, but he does bring convictions to the saints of God. Have you ever felt the conviction? Yes, we said that a moment ago. But the guilt and the shame come from the enemy. And he realizes these things, and he's broken about it. But then there's David again in Psalm 34. He's helpless. He's alone and afraid. You would be too if your life was on the line and you had somebody coming after you. Sure. But he tells us this in Psalm 34 when he's feeling all alone. How many of you know you're supposed to build yourself up in your faith? David is building himself up by declaring this, that the Lord is near to the brokenhearted. Father, you're here. And though I feel like I'm on the run and I feel like no one even cares and no one's even coming to my rescue, God, you are here. You are near in that moment. Yes, you and I have found ourselves there. But here's the thing. At times, our own pride can get in the way of receiving the healing of our broken hearts. What does 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6 and 7 say? It says this. Humble yourself, therefore, under God's mighty hand. What kind of hand does God have? Mighty. Mighty to save. That he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him. Because, why? Because he cares for you. Don't let your heart become hardened and calloused. Don't let yourself be closed in and not able to break free and have freedom this morning because he's mighty to save a broken heart and, and to, to, to see yourself free in Jesus. He whom the Son sets free 
is seed, he says. You might know of somebody like that. We pray for them. We reach out to them. We share kind words with them. We spend time with them. I'm so thankful for the family of God. Are you? I'm so thankful for the church that none of us are alone. We shouldn't feel alone because I'm talking first about our, how the Lord is near to us, but you're near to, uh, to me as well. Julie and I in the last 20 years have gone through some great times and we've gone through some valleys. And I remember that one time when we formed a circle or in this whole building. You remember that? When Julie was diagnosed with breast cancer. And I can tell you something, our hearts were broken. Really broken. And uh, in that service, I can still remember it. It's been over, a little over 10 years ago. This church, before we left, joined hands and circled this whole sanctuary and prayed for Julie and I. I felt something that day. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and uses the church as well. He uses the church as well. Because you're his hands, you're his feet, and we ought to be that kind of people all the time. Instead of looking at people saying, well, it deserves them, you know, their life, their, their choices, you know, and we kind of pacify and make ourselves feel a little better. When in actuality, it doesn't matter what you've been and how you've acted, sometimes our Heartbreak is our own doing. It's our own doing. And yet, Jesus loves us so much, like he loves Peter. Peter's heart was broken. Peter's heart was broken. Look what he had done. Look at how he had denied the Lord. And Jesus found him and forgave him. He's near to the brokenhearted. There's no sin of the past or of the present that is without side of the grace of God. Can I get an amen to that? It doesn't matter what struggle you're going through. It doesn't matter what habit you find yourself in. Oh, yes, Bible says throw it off. Throw it off, my friend. But yes, he's there for us. Healing of a heart broken cannot occur if we can't admit that healing needs to happen in the first place. So here today, you know what maybe some of us need to do is just admit, I need to have that healing happen, and I want it, and I desire it. Lord, let it happen in my life. We have to confess it. So don't let shame and pride and guilt stand in the way, my friend, but receive it as you do what? Pour your heart out to God. David poured his heart out to God. Secondly, Forgive others who have wronged or hurt you. Forgive others who have wronged or hurt you because we also know brokenness can happen by the hands of other people. And we have to forgive. Starting point for all of our lives is forgiveness. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as, I like how he says it, just as in Christ God forgave you. Paul, helping us understand this morning that the forgiveness of others is first and foremost because God forgave you. And so therefore we do it for others. Forgiveness helps us to let go of offense. So healing can happen and we can carry on with our life because if you don't, mark it down, if you don't, you'll have bitterness and resentment. It'll creep up and get a foothold in your life and you will not be able to experience the true joy and peace that comes in Jesus. Trust me. Have I ever had to forgive others? You better believe it. Man, I, I've had to forgive. I've had to say, Lord Jesus, you're the judge, not me. <laughs> Lord, you're the one who has heard everything that's been said or done. Lord, I just have to give it to you because I've got to go on with life. I've got to move on with Jesus. And so do you. But we sometimes revisit those things and we revisit and we revisit and, and, and the enemy starts playing with our minds and our emotions and, and we find ourselves back in the same place we were before. But I tell you what, there's so much liberty in forgiving. So much freedom in it. And, and that's how Jesus is with us. The Bible says he removes our sin as far as the east is from the west. 
You go east, you'll never go west. That's why he said it. They'll never come again. It's gone. We must all extend grace and forgiveness towards others. After all, we all need forgiveness ourselves. Whether we've been mistreated or wronged or ignored or misunderstood. Nobody's ever been misunderstood, right? I think that's probably one of the biggest areas of humankind is we're just misunderstood. We're like, that's not what I meant. And we get all bent out of shape and then we can't forgive because we're misunderstood or we're left out. God, again, is bigger than all the hurt and all those things that you could ever go through. Third way to experience the healing of a broken heart is this. Will you do this with me? Reflect on the faithfulness and purposes of God. Reflect on the faithfulness and purposes of God. Church, it's so easy to look at a situation. And you can also look at the situation of others. And you respond by what you see and what you feel in the moment. Have we ever done that? Respond in the, what, well, that's what I see, that's what I feel. And then we all of a sudden start making a movement, start making a decision, start acting a certain way. We have to realize that God is still moving and fulfilling his perfect plan in our lives. Yes, even in the midst of the hurt of David, he's on the run. Do you know God was with him the whole time he was on the run? God was with him in the caves. God was with him when he was hiding. God was with him when he had nothing. I'm telling you something, God is with you regardless of where you find yourself. Realize that God has a purpose and a plan. We say this often, but greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And so whatever the devil throws at you, guess what? God is bigger than it. God is bigger than all those things. And uh, so David understood, and that's why he talked about this in Psalm 34, and he encouraged himself in this. But listen, church, don't let forms of jealousy, resentment, defensiveness, all those things fester in your thoughts and in your heart. God's loving kindness is still working in your life. Can you say amen? How many are experiencing his loving kindness today? Wow. Lord, you're so amazing. Another song we sing around here a lot is his amazing love. What he does for us. We would say, I don't deserve it. I really don't. But God says, you're my child. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. I love that. Hey, one of the scriptures, Hallmark scriptures, is Romans chapter 8, verse 28. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. You've been called, child of God. You've been called by God. And the purposes and plans of God are even being fulfilled in this moment while you sit here in this church service. Yes. And when we leave here in a few moments, the Bible says the steps of the righteous are ordered of God. You say, I'm going to leave this building and I'm going to go get some lunch. Guess what? He's ordering your steps. He's directing your steps unless you want to do it your way. Right? Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. All your ways acknowledge him and he'll do what? He'll direct your path. You make a choice when you leave here today whether you trust in yourself or trust in God. How many think if you trust in yourself you're in big trouble today? I'll be getting some phone calls. Pastor? <laughs> I was trusting in myself. <laughs> Help. <laughs> yeah, we're all there, aren't we? But I, I, I'm back to tell you this, that all things somehow work together for good. Praise the Lord. Think about the times of the faithfulness of God. I wouldn't be here with my wife, Julie, and my three children had it not been me going through one of the most difficult, broken-hearted experiences of my life. I'm telling you, some of you know the story, I won't get into it today, but we would never be here as pastor today had it not been for something that happened to us 22 years ago where our hearts were seriously broken. But God had a plan in through the brokenness. You see, God already knows your brokenness before it even happens. 
Because God knows you inside and out. He knows your beginnings and your end. He already knows when those times are going to come where you're going to feel the brokenness, when you're going to feel the letdown, when you're going to feel mistreated, when you're going to feel misunderstood, and all kinds of other things that could happen. And I can tell you for a fact that if I hadn't gotten through that brokenness experience in my life, I'd have been a man, a mess, and we wouldn't be here today. But God knew we were going to be here someday, and I had to walk through a time of great brokenness. But you see, God knows, and God understands. How many of you have ever had to watch your kids get broken sometimes, and you're like, they'll get through it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we feel bad for them. They're, they're walking through a time in their life, but you're like, you know what? They're going to be better for it in the end. They're going to learn from that. How many should learn from your brokenness? Help me to learn from it, Lord. you got to speak to my heart in this. Help me not to hold on to it and start blaming other people or get defensive of my own actions. Because, you know, we all can be very defensive people. Amen? Come on. We can all be very defensive. Oh, Lord, help us with that. I, 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 you know, it can, have, it can impact a marriage. <laughs> you know, Julie will say, hey, Dave, you, you needed to do that. And, and then I'm, I can either say, yes, dear, or I can get real defensive. I realize, yeah, I should have done that. I messed up. I, I should have taken care of that. I should have been a part of that. So it's, it's just our human nature, isn't it? So don't let those things happen. And just, but again, realize God can turn your brokenness into beauty. Let me say it again. God can turn your brokenness into beauty. And he can take your pain and he can turn it into purpose. Renewed hope and peace comes even in the times of trouble. And let me close the final point. You're going to have a change. You must have a change in your lifestyle and avoid temptation. This is a biggie. I could take a whole sermon on this. But let me just share a few quick points with you on this last point. Galatians chapter 6, verses 7 and 8. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. The one who sows to please his sinful nature, from that nature will reap destruction. And the one who sows to please the Spirit, from the Spirit will reap eternal life. First of all, how is God mocked? Because God cannot be mocked. You know how God is mocked if we take this in its context in the Scripture in which Paul is talking about here? He's talking about actions and behavior. Sowing and reaping. It's like this, folks. When we try to rationalize our behavior and our actions and our lifestyle contrary to the word of God, we know it's sinful, we know it's destructive, you're mocking God. Can I put it any more bluntly? That's what it is. When we know God's word says such and so, and we decide to do something else, and we decide to rationalize it, we can try to get excuses for it, you're not mocking anybody but God. That's what Paul said. Do not be deceived. i got to tell you, if you start going down that path, you're going to find great heartache. Mark it down. How many know that sin is pleasurable for a season, but in the end it reaps destruction? It's fun for a while. Pastor George, was it fun for a while? Yeah, you can attest. It was fun for a while, but you knew what the end result was. It wasn't good. You were headed for destruction. All it takes is the little things here and the little things there where we say, well, God will understand this. God understands that. People need to understand this. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. Take it up with the Word of God. Take it up with the Word of God because it can't be mocked. Change Avoid temptation. You've got to stop listening to your flesh. You can't ignore God's word. You can't ignore the Holy Spirit. You've got to stop listening to the culture. How many think we've got this inundated culture out there that's permeating every aspect of our... Some of you are seeing it on your jobs. Some of you are seeing it at your work site, in the schools, wherever you're at, and it's plastered all over television and the shows that you watch. Culture and society... But listen, you ask yourself the question, though, is it acceptable in the sight of God and His Word? David 
should have turned and walked the other way. But she was beautiful. He was alone. No one's going to know. Yeah, uh uh-huh. Right? He was wrong. He was in sin. He tried to justify it. He tried to hide it. Tried to rationalize it to no avail. And it brought destruction. Oh, church, you want to live a life that's free of the brokenheartedness of sin? Then live a life holy to God. Live a life pleasing to God. Live a right righteous to God. What a testimony to say you're living for God. What a, what a testimony to say I lived by the word of God. I, I didn't compromise. I didn't, I didn't kind of ride the fence. I didn't kind of try to do it this way and that way when I know God's word said the other thing. How am I supposed to live? Willful sinning is a sure road to a broken heart. Can I say it again? Willful sinning is a sure road to a broken heart. I mentioned a moment ago, and it's found in Hebrews eleven twenty five. But the pleasures of sinful living. Hey, David was having a good time, but it reaped destruction, heartache. So remember the words of Paul in Galatians two twenty. He says, "I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, but Christ lives in me. In the life that I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me." And gave himself for me. Who lives in you? Christ lives in you. Before your words are spoken. Christ, what should I say? Jesus, what should I say? Before I do, Christ lives in me. Should I do that? Should I be a part of that? You see, we check it with Jesus. How many of you check your life with Jesus? Absolutely. I have to do that all the time. You do too. Many times, Lord, I need your help. I got I to check in with the Lord on this one because I might say or do something I shouldn't do. But let me close it with this thought. Let me reaffirm to you this morning that if you're striving every day to live for God, letting Christ live in and through you, testifying to the fruits of the Spirit in your life, how many of you know you've been given all nine fruits? Did you know that? Don't tell me I don't have patience. Child of God, you were given patience. You're just not exercising it. Come on. Yeah, don't buy, don't buy anything. The Holy Spirit doesn't hold back certain gifts. When you got the gifts of the Spirit, the fruits of the Spirit, rather, I'm talking about the fruits right now. Listen, you got them all. Love, joy, peace, patience. Come on, you know the list, right? We learned them at Construction Zone. Not too long ago. You have them all, and you should be demonstrating them all, all the time. And I know we fail, don't we? But God, help us. Times of trouble, they will still come. But we read from Psalm 34, 17, just the verse prior. Here's what he says. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. Doesn't mean we're not going to have trouble. Doesn't mean we're not going to have some heartaches. But he's going to deliver us from them all. He's able. He's able to mend your broken heart. He's able to make sense of what you can't make sense of right now. He's able to work through those things in your life. Do anybody question God a lot? I do. And Lord, I, I don't understand. But my heart is lifted up. Because I listen to his voice. I, I, I say, Lord, I, I just need you in this moment. How many of you live, want to live a life that says, Lord, I don't want to do anything that displeases you, Lord. Can you pray that prayer? I want you to bow your heads with me right now. They're going to come. I want you to think in your heart and your mind, in your spirit, is it true of your life that you can say right now with all honesty, Father, all I want to do is please you. All I want to do is honor you. All I want to do is glorify you. Lord, help me today. Listen, as you're praying that kind of prayer this morning, allow the Lord to speak into your life. Let the Holy Spirit of God do His work. 
All I did today, church family, is give you what's in the Bible. All I did today was share with you what's in His Word. If you're here today and your heart is broken, He's here to touch you. He's here to mend. He's here to give you new life and to restore, to give back what the enemy has been stealing from you all along. So if you need that joy and forgiveness, listen, he's here for you with his arms outstretched. Say, Lord, here am I, take me. Lord, maybe you're here today and you actually need to say these words, Lord, forgive me. It's okay. He's ready to forgive. Lord, forgive us. Cleanse us. Maybe you're here today and you need to be renewed in your mind because you've been patterning your life after this world. Be renewed in your mind. Lord Jesus, help us to be renewed in the mind of yours. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, right now I pray. I pray for the those that have a broken heart today. Regardless of what it's about, whether it's they feel they're all alone like he was in Psalm 34 and on the run, wondering where God was, but God, you said, he said, you're near to me. And I pray for those this morning that feel like that, that God is healing that heart right now. For that one that feels as though the Spirit of God has been moving and speaking to your heart and you just need to be broken before him, I pray for you today, receive that strength receive that forgiveness, receive that cleansing that God has for your life today. Receive your victory in Jesus' name. I want everybody to stand. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Heads bowed, nice close one more time. Hallelujah. How many of you this morning say, there's a, there's a part in my life, Pastor, remember me in prayer. There's something going on in my life right now where I need my heart mended. It's been broken, but I need it mended. Just raise your hand up high. There's a part of my life, there's a brokenness there. Lord, I need you to mend it. Father, I pray for all these that have their hands raised. There are so many. There are so many right now. Lord, I pray. I pray that the Spirit of God would mend hearts today. Fill and renew and refresh. And Lord, let forgiveness flow. And let your unfailing love transcend all things. Oh God, thank you that you're always near to those who are broken. Father, I thank you in Jesus' name. We're going to sing this song. Can I do this again? I've been doing this occasionally. Everybody that raised your hand and said, um, I, I just got something broken in my life and I'm looking to Jesus to mend it. Would you come forward? I want you to come first. We're going to sing this song. He's mighty to save. You guys, just come on. Come on. Everybody that raised their hand, if you didn't, just come anyway. And then I want others to come and stand behind them. You guys, come up close. Come up close. How many of you believe God's ready to mend broken hearts? Come on, guys. Just come in closer. I want everybody to come in if they can. Come on.